Hello, how is everyone? A virtual press conference was organized and the Rwandan head of state answered questions concerning Rwanda's continued fight against the COVID-19 pandemic moving into the foreseeable future. Before we can allow factories to resume their normal operations, we must first assess how much progress we have made fighting this pandemic. There is no question that industries have been negatively affected by their measures, even people's families and every location where they live. Everything has been affected in one way or another. That is why we are looking into ways of identifying activities that can be allowed to resume. Again, basing on our progress in fighting this pandemic. In fact, I was telling people the other day that we will hold a cabinet meeting examining the gathering of information, the figures, how much the pandemic has spread, the tracing efforts to identify the infected and anyone they could have come into contact with and possibly infected. There is also a lot of work related to all that. We must therefore look into all this and then decide how we are to proceed forward. We could allow some activities to resume, for example, the operations of those factories, whether only a few are to resume or they all do, but respecting the measures of people protecting themselves and others from the virus. The set of protective clothes they wear, the distance they maintain between each other while at work. We believe that people will understand the need to do such things if some of the restrictions are lifted, so that slowly by slowly life can return to normal. I believe that would be how it would be done. Asked whether the government's seven-year program, running from 2017 to 2024, would be altered as a result of the coronavirus pandemic, the president pointed out that, without a doubt, it would be affected as well, but also stressed that Rwandans have learned to find the strength to overcome adversity, and this will be no different. The pandemic will change a lot when it comes to the objectives we had set to do with what is to be done here in the country, development, the social welfare of citizens, a lot, but not all. Instead, some things may now take precedence over others to make everything else possible. Understand that many things will change, to do with the way we approach situations, analyzing figures and attempts to speed up the implementation of projects. This is like a wake-up call, urging people to continue their efforts for development, but at a much faster pace. Anyway, regardless of the presence of the pandemic, I believe when we make plans and implement them, some of the things you meet with during their implementation may require adjustments. Well, this pandemic is not the first problem Rwandans have had to deal with. We have encountered many different problems and we always work together using every resource at our disposal to continue developing. So we must continue fighting this pandemic and recognize just how serious it is in light of how it has negatively affected our way of life as Rwandans. The fact that it is a threat to our health and the economy also. But it is also a reminder that this is how it goes when we encounter problems of this magnitude, a pandemic. We must find the resources to deal with it among ourselves and, if necessary, seek them elsewhere when we fall short. But we must start with what we have. The first COVID-19 case was identified in Rwanda on the 14th of March and measures to contain the virus quickly went into effect, resulting in a full lockdown that began on the 21st of that month and has remained in effect to this day. Still on coronavirus at the press conference held by President Paul Kagame, uh, he stressed that Rwanda Defence Force has nothing to do with the offensive that armed forces of the Democratic Republic of Congo have continued to carry out against FDR and other armed groups, groups rather, operating in the Eastern DRC. Serge Nori continues. There is not a single soldier of RDF. The Rwandan president was speaking during the virtual press conference, responding to baseless speculations that Rwandan soldiers are involved in the offensives in the Eastern DRC. There is not a single soldier of RDF that has gone to that territory, not a single one, I, I, I say it with authority. But some NGOs, some uh, journalists are able to see battalions and all kinds of things. But 
the government of uh, DRC knows the fact, knows that, knows that RDF, not a single soldier of RDF is there. The head of state pointed out that the people spreading such false information are the very ones looking to somehow benefit from it. DRC has been very helpful uh, because it's their territory and uh, the people in DRC are the ones actually suffering on the hands of uh, uh, these rebel groups. Maybe except those who work with them, some benefit from working with them. As you saw, it's not even the best just in DRC, it's external. Somebody complains about Rwanda uh, being in DRC, uh, operating against the FDRR and the prefer to call them refugees rather than FDRR. And it, they are doing that from abroad. And some of these people who are doing that are Rwandese who actually finance or support these groups operating in DRC or their supporters also who are not Rwandese necessarily who are from Europe or America or wherever. So the whole thing keeps being a cocktail. And that explains why this problem has been there for the last 26 years. The current EAC chairman also touched on regional efforts to fight the spread of the COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic and some of the challenges being encountered. Even being the chair of the East African community, uh, you don't uh, manage uh, partner states' affairs. Uh, still, countries manage themselves the way they deem fit, even if one would wish that we look at it uh, in a sense of uh, collective responsibility, working together uh, so that we deal with this problem that is facing us, all of us. We attempted uh, to also hold a summit, uh, heads of state to meet and discuss and give direction and in a coordinated way. Uh, this did not happen because of the three member states whose leaders were not able uh, to connect uh, with all of us, the rest, for the summit. Uh, but the effort was made and we even made an effort to uh, try and have another one at another date that suited everyone. Uh, still, it appeared not everyone was ready. So, in essence, here we were affected more by even the procedures than really the substance. Kenya currently has the highest COVID-19 infections in the EAC at 363, then Tanzania with 299. And South Sudan has remained with the fewest confirmed cases at just six. President Paul Kagame also touched on global cooperation efforts to fight the spread of the virus and its repercussions, saying progress is being made.